Leader Kaiden Reese sat hunched over his desk, the weight of responsibility bearing down on his shoulders like a physical burden. The reports scattered before him painted a grim picture, each page a stark reminder of the dire circumstances his nation faced. Water reservoirs were nearing critical levels, with the once abundant rivers and lakes reduced to mere trickles. Kaiden could vividly recall the lush fields that had once stretched as far as the eye could see, now barren wastelands where nothing grew. The soil, once rich and fertile, had become a cracked and desolate expanse, incapable of sustaining even the hardiest of crops. Rubbing his weary eyes, Kaiden turned his attention to the energy report. The aging infrastructure, neglected for decades, was on the verge of collapse. Blackouts had become a daily occurrence, crippling the already struggling cities and plunging entire neighborhoods into darkness. A soft knock at the door drew his attention, and Kaiden's aide, Leah, entered with a somber expression. The council is assembled, sir. They're awaiting your presence. Kaiden nodded, gathering the reports with a heavy sigh. Very well. It's time we faced the harsh reality before us. As he strode into the council chamber, the weight of the nation's plight hung thick in the air. Advisors and ministers sat around the long table, their expressions a mix of grave concern and thinly veiled desperation. My friends, Kaiden began, his voice carrying the weariness of a man who had borne too much for too long. We stand at a crossroads, faced with a future that grows bleaker by the day. Our resources are dwindling, our infrastructure crumbling, and our people losing hope. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the chamber, each attendee acutely aware of the severity of their situation. What solutions can we offer? Kaiden pressed, his gaze sweeping across the assembled council. We cannot continue down this path, lest we condemn our nation to extinction. Advisor Karina Velas was the first to speak, her voice laced with frustration. We've explored every option, from strict rationing to seeking new habitable worlds. But the truth is, we lack the resources and technology to sustain our people, let alone undertake a mass evacuation. Then what would you have us do? Minister Oren Barrow challenged, his fist slamming against the table. Sit idly by and watch our civilization crumble to dust. The room erupted into heated debates, each council member offering their opinions and objections, voices rising in a cacophony of despair and determination. Kaiden held up a calming hand his eyes betraying the burden he carried. I understand your concerns, all of you. Believe me, I share your fears and frustrations, but we cannot afford to be paralyzed by indecision. We must explore every avenue, no matter how unlikely, or risk consigning our people to a fate worse than death. His gaze hardened with resolve. I propose we allocate what resources we have left to construct a fleet of probes, designed to scour the galaxy for habitable worlds. It's a long shot, but it may be our only hope of finding a new home before it's too late. The council fell silent, the weight of Kaiden's words sinking in. They knew the risks, the sacrifices such an endeavor would entail, but what choice did they have? Before anyone could respond, a loud blaring siren echoed through the chamber, followed by Leah's frantic voice over the intercom. Leader Reese, you need to see this. An unknown spacecraft has entered our orbit. Exchanging worried glances, the council members rushed to the observation deck, their eyes widening at the sight of the massive alien vessel hovering ominously above their planet. Kaiden's heart raced, torn between fear and a glimmer of hope. Could this be their salvation? Or the harbinger of their doom? The council chamber descended into chaos, advisors and ministers alike shouting over one another, their voices laced with fear and uncertainty. Kaiden could scarcely believe his eyes as the massive alien spacecraft loomed overhead, its presence both awe-inspiring and deeply unsettling. We need to mobilize our defenses immediately, Minister Oren Varro bellowed, his face flushed with rage. This could be an invasion force, come to strip us of what little we have left. Karina Velas shook her head vehemently. And risk provoking a conflict we have no means to win. We barely have enough resources to sustain our people let alone wage war against an advanced alien race. The arguments escalated, each council member voicing their concerns and proposed courses of action. Some advocated for an immediate show of force, while others urged caution, fearing the consequences of rash decisions. Kaiden raised his hands, 
his commanding presence quieting the room. Enough. We cannot allow panic and rash judgments to cloud our thinking. Whatever this alien presence represents, we must approach it with level heads and a unified front. Turning to his aide, Leah, he gave a firm nod. Initiate emergency protocols. I want our military on high alert, but instruct them to stand down unless provoked. We cannot risk escalating tensions until we understand the intentions behind this visit. Leah acknowledged the order with a sharp salute, her expression one of grim determination. In the meantime, Kaiden continued, his gaze sweeping across the council, we need to open lines of communication with these aliens. Perhaps they come in peace, offering aid or knowledge that could be the key to our survival. Murmurs of skepticism rippled through the room, but none dared to openly challenge their leader's authority. As the council dispersed to carry out their assigned tasks, Kaiden found himself drawn to the observation deck once more. The alien spacecraft hung motionless in the sky, its sleek lines and otherworldly design a stark contrast to the crumbling world below. What are your intentions? He murmured under his breath, his eyes narrowing as he studied the enigmatic vessel. Friend or foe, we shall soon find out. Hours ticked by intense silence, the council members and military commanders awaiting any sign of movement from the aliens. Kaiden refused to leave his post, his gaze unwavering as he monitored the situation. Suddenly, a series of blips appeared on the long-range scanners, indicating multiple smaller craft disembarking from the main vessel. Kaiden's heart raced as he barked orders into the comms, his voice betraying none of the uncertainty he felt. All units, stand ready. But I remind you, do not engage unless fired upon. We cannot afford to instigate conflict. The council chamber erupted into a flurry of activity, advisors and aides rushing to their stations as the alien craft descended towards the planet's surface. Tension crackled in the air, each member of Kaiden's team bracing for the unknown. On the observation deck, Kaiden watched with bated breath as the first alien craft touched down in a desolate valley, kicking up clouds of dust and debris. His fingers tightened around the railing as a hatch opened, revealing a group of strange, humanoid figures emerging from within. By the gods, Karina breathed, her eyes wide with a mixture of awe and trepidation. What are they? Before Kaiden could respond, a burst of static filled the chamber, followed by a garbled, indecipherable transmission. He exchanged a bewildered glance with Leah, his brow furrowed in concentration. They're trying to communicate, he murmured, his mind racing to decipher the alien language. But their signals are unlike anything we've encountered before. As the alien figures began to advance, Kaiden felt the weight of his responsibility like never before. The fate of his nation, his people, rested squarely on his shoulders, with a steadying breath, he steeled his resolve, determined to navigate this unprecedented encounter with the wisdom and fortitude befitting a true leader. Ready the translation matrices, he ordered, his voice unwavering. We must find a way to understand them, no matter the cost. Our survival may depend on it. As the translation matrices whirred into action, attempting to decipher the alien transmissions, a palpable sense of unease settled over the council chamber. Kaiden watched the scene unfold with a furrowed brow, his fingers drumming against the railing in a nervous rhythm. We're making progress, Leah murmured, her eyes fixed on the flickering displays. But their language is unlike anything in our databases. It's going to take time to establish a coherent translation. Kaiden nodded grimly, his gaze never wavering from the alien figures prowling the desolate valley below. Despite their outward humanoid appearance, Something about their movements sent a shiver down his spine deliberate, almost predatory. Sir, the military is reporting increased activity near the landing site, one of the aides called out, her voice laced with tension. They're requesting permission to mobilize additional forces, just in case. A heavy silence hung in the air as all eyes turned towards Kaiden, awaiting his decision. He could feel the weight of their collective fear, their uncertainty in the face of this unprecedented encounter. Denied, he said at last, his voice resolute. We cannot afford to escalate tensions prematurely. For now, we maintain a defensive posture and continue our efforts to establish communication. Murmurs of dissent rippled through the chamber, but none dared to openly challenge their leader's authority. They knew the risks, the delicate balance they tread, 
and the dire consequences of missteps. As the minutes ticked by, the tension mounted, each person in the chamber holding their breath in anticipation. Suddenly, the displays flickered to life, a series of garbled words and phrases gradually coalescing into something resembling coherent speech. Identify yourselves, intentions, peaceful. Kaiden leaned forward, his brow furrowed in concentration. Can you isolate the signal? We need to respond, let them know we come in peace as well. Technicians worked feverishly, their fingers dancing across the control panels as they fine-tuned the translation algorithms. Finally, a clear message began to form. Greetings, Kaiden spoke slowly, his voice amplified and transmitted towards the alien landing site. We are the people of this world, and we mean you no harm. Please, identify yourselves and state your intentions. A tense silence followed, broken only by the soft beeps and whirs of the machinery surrounding them. Kaiden held his breath, his heart pounding in his chest as he awaited a response. Then, without warning, a deafening roar echoed through the chamber, the displays flickering violently as a burst of static filled the air. Instinctively, Kaiden and the others covered their ears, wincing against the onslaught of noise. What in the blazes was that? Minister Varro shouted, his face contorted in a mix of fear and rage. Before anyone could respond, the static cleared, revealing a series of haunting images flickering across the screens. Kaiden's eyes widened in horror as he took in the scenes of devastation cities reduced to rubble, landscapes scorched and lifeless, and the unmistakable silhouettes of massive, otherworldly war machines. They're showing us their power, Karina whispered, her voice trembling. A demonstration of what they're capable of. Kaiden swallowed hard, his throat suddenly dry. He had faced many challenges in his lifetime, but nothing could have prepared him for this moment, this encounter with a force so vastly beyond their comprehension. As the images faded, a single, chilling message flashed across the displays. Surrender or be annihilated. The council chamber erupted into pandemonium, advisors and aides shouting and gesturing wildly as fear took hold. Kaiden stood motionless, his mind racing to process the implications of the alien's ultimatum. In that moment, he realized the true gravity of the situation they faced. This was no mere encounter, but a potential turning point in the very survival of their species. With a deep breath, he steadied himself, his eyes hardening with determination. Silence, he bellowed, his commanding voice cutting through the chaos like a blade. We will not surrender to fear or intimidation. Not now, not ever. Turning towards the displays, he squared his shoulders, every inch the embodiment of a leader prepared to face the greatest of challenges. You have our attention, he declared, his voice resonating with newfound strength. But know this, we are a proud people, and we will not be cowed by mere displays of power. If you seek to subjugate us, you will face resistance unlike anything you've ever known. As the final words echoed through the chamber, a hush fell over the gathered council members, their eyes fixed on their unwavering leader. In that moment, they drew strength from his resilience, his refusal to yield in the face of what seemed like insurmountable odds. Kaiden's defiant words hung in the air, the council chamber thick with tension and uncertainty. No one dared to speak, their eyes fixed on the displays as they awaited the alien's response to the leader's bold challenge. Seconds ticked by like hours, the silence deafening in its weight. Then, without warning, the static cleared, and a series of images began to flicker across the screen's images unlike anything they had seen before. At first, the scenes appeared to depict vast, otherworldly landscapes rolling hills of crimson grass, towering crystalline spires that glittered in the light of twin suns, and cities that seemed to defy the laws of physics itself. But as the images continued to cycle, a startling realization dawned upon the council members. Those... Those are not alien worlds, Karina breathed, her eyes wide with disbelief. Those are images of our own planet, but... But how is that possible? Kaiden leaned forward, his brow furrowed as he studied the displays intently. The scenes were unmistakable, the familiar contours of their planet's continents, the long extinct mountain ranges, and the lush, verdant ecosystems that had once thrived before the slow march of environmental decay. As if sensing their confusion, a series of text began to scroll across the bottom of the displays, 
the translation matrices working furiously to interpret the alien language. We are not your enemy, the message read. We are guardians, tasked with aiding struggling civilizations through the application of advanced terraforming technologies. A collective gasp rippled through the chamber, the implications of the aliens' words sinking in. Terraforming the ability to reshape entire worlds, to restore what had been lost to the ravages of time and neglect. Could it be true? Minister Varl murmured, his voice laced with a mix of awe and skepticism. Do they truly possess the power to revitalize our dying world? Kaiden remained silent, his mind racing as he weighed the potential risks and rewards of trusting these enigmatic beings. On one hand, their offer of aid could represent the salvation his people so desperately sought. But on the other, he could not ignore the veiled threat that had accompanied their initial contact, nor the unsettling display of their destructive capabilities. As if sensing his hesitation, the alien transmission continued. We understand your trepidation, but we come in peace, bearing knowledge and technology that could help your world heal and thrive once more. The choice is yours, embrace our aid, or continue down the path of inevitable extinction. A heavy silence fell over the chamber, each council member wrestling with their own doubts and fears. Kaiden could feel their gazes upon him, the weight of their uncertainty palpable in the air. Finally, he straightened, his expression one of grim determination. We cannot afford to dismiss this opportunity, no matter how uncertain the path may seem, he declared, his voice resonating with conviction. But we must proceed with caution and on our own terms. Turning towards the displays, he squared his shoulders, every inch the embodiment of a leader prepared to navigate the treacherous waters ahead. Hear me, guardians, he said, his words carried with the weight of a man who had witnessed the slow demise of his world. We are a proud people, long-suffering and resilient in the face of adversity. If your offer of aid is genuine, we will embrace it, but we will not be subjugated or made to surrender our autonomy. He paused, letting the gravity of his words sink in before continuing. Present your proposal, and we shall consider it with open minds and hearts. But know this any attempt at deception or coercion will be met with the full force of our resolve. The choice to trust you is ours, and ours alone. A hushed murmur rippled through the council, a mix of trepidation and cautious hope. They knew the risks, the potential consequences of their leader's decision, but in that moment, they placed their faith in his wisdom and guidance. The council chamber was utterly still, the air thick with anticipation as they awaited the alien's response to Kaiden's resolute challenge. The leader stood firm, his gaze unwavering as he studied the flickering displays for any sign of movement or communication. Then, without warning, the images shifted, revealing what appeared to be a massive construct, a towering spire of gleaming metal and crystalline matrices, its sheer scale defying comprehension. Kaiden's breath caught in his throat as he watched in awe, the holographic representation rotating slowly to reveal the full magnitude of the structure. By the gods, Karina whispered, her voice laced with a mix of wonder and trepidation. What are we witnessing? Before anyone could respond, a series of text began to scroll across the bottom of the displays, the translation matrices working furiously to interpret the alien language. Behold the terraforming nexus, the message read. A construct capable of reshaping entire worlds, restoring lost ecosystems, and revitalizing dying planets. This is but a fraction of the knowledge and technology we possess. Kaiden's mind raced, struggling to comprehend the implications of what he was witnessing. To wield such power the ability to mend the very fabric of a world was a concept so vast, so utterly beyond their understanding, that it bordered on the divine. As the holographic projection continued to cycle, Kaiden could make out intricate systems and subsystems, each one more complex than the last. Energy matrices pulsed with an otherworldly radiance, while massive arrays appeared to manipulate and redirect forces on a scale he could scarcely fathom. This is... This is beyond anything we could have imagined, Minister Varro breathed, his usual bravado replaced by a sense of humbled awe. Kaiden nodded slowly, his eyes never leaving the display. Indeed, and yet, they offer to share this knowledge, this power, with us. The question remains at what cost? A contemplative silence fell over the chamber, each council member grappling with the weight of the decision before them. 
To accept the aliens' aid could mean the salvation of their world, the restoration of all that had been lost to the ravages of time and neglect. But to do so would require placing their trust, their very fate, in the hands of beings whose true intentions remained shrouded in mystery. As if sensing their hesitation, the alien transmission continued. We understand your apprehension, for we have borne witness to the folly of unchecked progress and the consequences of hubris. But we come to you not as conquerors, but as guardians, bound by a sacred oath to aid those in need, to heal the wounds inflicted upon the universe by the arrogance of our ancestors. The words hung in the air, their weight palpable, and Kaiden found himself drawn in by the sincerity that seemed to resonate within them. Heed our proposal, the message continued. Allow us to demonstrate our capabilities, to revitalize your world and restore that which has been lost. Only then, with knowledge and understanding, can you make an informed decision to embrace our aid or reject it, of your own free will. Kaiden exchanged glances with his counsel, reading the mix of trepidation and cautious hope in their eyes. He knew that the path forward would be fraught with uncertainties, with risks that could potentially shake the very foundations of their society. But in that moment, he also saw the glimmer of possibility, the chance to restore their world to its former glory and secure a future for his people, a future worth fighting for. With a steadying breath, he turned back towards the displays, his expression one of grim determination. Very well, he declared, his voice resonating with the weight of a leader prepared to navigate uncharted waters. We will witness this demonstration of your capabilities and judge for ourselves the merits of your offer. But make no mistake, any attempt at deception or coercion will be met with the full force of our resolve. We are a proud people, and we will not surrender our autonomy, no matter the promised rewards. A hushed murmur rippled through the chamber, but Kaiden held up a hand, silencing the council with a single gesture. Prepare yourselves, he said, his gaze fixated on the holographic display. For better or worse, we are about to bear witness to the dawn of a new era one that will either herald our salvation or seal our fate for all eternity. The council chamber was utterly still, the air thick with anticipation as the holographic display flickered and pulsed, the alien construct seemingly poised to launch its demonstration. Kaiden's hands gripped the railing tightly, his knuckles whitening with the tension that coursed through his body. Then, without warning, the display shifted and a series of coordinates began to scroll across the bottom of the screen. Kaiden's brow furrowed as he recognized the geographic markers a desolate stretch of badlands, a barren wasteland where nothing had grown for decades. What are they? Karina began, but her words were cut short as the holographic projection suddenly expanded, casting an immense, three-dimensional rendering of the designated area into the center of the chamber. Kaiden's breath caught in his throat as he studied the simulacrum, every detail rendered with such precision that it was almost indistinguishable from reality. The cracked, parched earth stretched out before them, devoid of even the slightest hint of life or vegetation. As they watched, transfixed, a series of pulsing energy matrices began to coalesce around the projection, their otherworldly radiance casting an eerie glow throughout the chamber. Kaiden instinctively shielded his eyes, squinting against the blinding light as it grew in intensity. Suddenly, without warning, the energy matrices converged, unleashing a brilliant burst of energy that seemed to ripple outwards from the holographic projection. Kaiden flinched, bracing himself for the inevitable impact, but the wave of energy simply washed over them harmlessly, leaving a strange, tingling sensation in its wake. When he opened his eyes once more, the scene before them had been transformed in a way that defied all comprehension. Where once a barren, lifeless expanse had stretched out before them, now a verdant meadow rolled as far as the eye could see. Lush grasses swayed in an unseen breeze, dotted with vibrant wildflowers that seemed to radiate with an almost otherworldly luminescence. Impossible, Minister Varro breathed, his voice barely a whisper as he took in the breathtaking sight. But the demonstration was far from over. As they watched in awe, the holographic projection began to shift and change the once desolate landscape giving way to towering forests, pristine rivers and lakes that sparkled with crystal-clear waters, and even majestic mountain ranges that seemed to pierce the very heavens themselves. Kaiden was rendered speechless, his mind struggling to comprehend the sheer magnitude of what he was witnessing. In the span of mere moments, the aliens had reshaped and revitalized an entire region, 
a feat that would have been considered nothing short of divine intervention mere hours ago. As the holographic display cycled through various ecosystems and biomass, each one more breathtaking than the last, a sense of cautious hope began to take root within Kaiden's heart. Could this truly be the salvation his people had been seeking? The answer to their desperate plight? Instinctively, his gaze turned towards the council, gauging their reactions to the awe-inspiring demonstration. He found a myriad of emotions etched across their faces disbelief, wonder, and in some cases, outright skepticism. It was Minister Varro who broke the silence first, his voice wavering ever so slightly as he spoke. This, this is beyond anything we could have imagined. But how can we be certain this is not mere trickery, some elaborate deception designed to sway us to their cause? Kaiden opened his mouth to respond, but before he could utter a word, a series of texts began to scroll across the bottom of the holographic display. Doubt is the nature of sentient beings, the message read. But know this what you have witnessed is but a fraction of our capabilities. The restoration of your world is well within our power, should you choose to embrace our aid. A hush fell over the chamber as the council members exchanged guarded glances, each grappling with the weight of the decision that lay before them. Kaiden could sense the undercurrent of tension, the clash between hope and skepticism that threatened to divide his advisors. It was in that moment that a realization dawned upon him, no matter the path they chose, their world would never be the same. The aliens had thrust them onto the precipice of a new era, one that would either herald the restoration of their planet or plunge them into an uncertain future, fraught with the consequences of their decision. Squaring his shoulders, Kaiden turned to face his counsel his eyes ablaze with a newfound determination. My friends, he began, his voice resonating with a strength born of conviction. We stand at a crossroads, faced with a choice that will shape the very destiny of our people. The path ahead will not be an easy one, no matter which course we choose. He paused, letting his words sink in before continuing. But know this, we are not a people who cower in the face of adversity. We are survivors, forged in the fires of hardship and deprivation. And it is that indomitable spirit that will guide us through this pivotal moment in our history. A murmur of agreement rippled through the chamber, and Kaiden could sense the council members drawing strength from his words, their trepidation slowly giving way to a renewed sense of purpose. The choice before us is clear, he declared, his gaze sweeping across the assembled advisors. We can embrace the aid of these guardians, these beings who claim to possess the power to restore our world to its former glory. Or we can reject their offer, clinging to the familiar path that has led us to the brink of extinction. He let the weight of his words hang in the air for a moment before continuing. But make no mistake whichever path we choose, there will be challenges to overcome, obstacles to surmount. For nothing worth fighting for comes without sacrifice. As he fell silent, Kaiden could feel the tension in the chamber shift a palpable sense of unity and determination taking root among his council members. They knew the risks, the uncertainties that lay ahead, but in that moment, they were bound by a shared resolve to forge a future worth fighting for, no matter the cost. With a steadying breath, Kaiden turned back towards the holographic display, his gaze fixed upon the breathtaking vistas that had been rendered before them. So let it be known, he declared, his voice ringing with conviction. We shall embrace the aid of the Guardians and walk the path of restoration and renewal. But we do so on our own terms, as a free and sovereign people, bound by our own beliefs and principles. Kaiden's proclamation hung in the air, the weight of his words resonating through the council chamber like a clarion call. The advisors exchanged glances, a mixture of trepidation and cautious optimism etched across their faces, as the gravity of the decision they had just made settled over them. For a brief moment, a heavy silence fell over the gathered leaders, each one grappling with the implications of embracing the Guardian's aid. It was Minister Varro who eventually broke the stillness, his voice laced with a guarded skepticism. And what of our people? he asked, his brow furrowed. How do we prepare them for the upheaval that is to come? Many will undoubtedly view this as a threat to our way of life, a subjugation of our autonomy to these, these beings. Kaiden nodded solemnly, acknowledging the weight of Varro's concerns. You speak true, my friend. The road ahead will not be an easy one, and we must brace ourselves for resistance both from those who cling to the old ways and from those who fear the unknown. 
He paused, his gaze sweeping across the assembled council members. But it is our duty, our responsibility, to guide our people through this transition. We must be the beacons of hope and understanding, unwavering in our conviction that embracing the Guardian's aid is our best chance at survival, at securing a future worth fighting for. A murmur of agreement rippled through the chamber, each advisor steeling themselves for the challenges that lay ahead. To that end, Kaiden continued, we must focus our efforts on two fronts preparing our infrastructure to accommodate the influx of knowledge and technology that will undoubtedly accompany the Guardian's presence and ensuring our people are educated on the necessity of this path. He turned towards Karina, his expression grave. Coordinator Velas, I task you with overseeing the establishment of advanced education facilities. We must ensure that our youth, and those willing to embrace the new era, are equipped with the knowledge and skills necessary to not only adapt, but to thrive in the world that is to come. Karina nodded, her eyes alight with determination. It will be done, leader. I shall assemble the finest minds in our nation to develop a comprehensive curriculum, one that will prepare our people for the technological and societal shifts that lie ahead. Satisfied, Kaiden then turned his attention to Minister Varro. And you, my friend, shall spearhead the integration of the Guardian's technology into our existing infrastructure. We must be prepared to accommodate their advanced systems and ensure a smooth transition from our current, failing networks. Varro inclined his head, his expression stern. I will not fail you, leader. Though the task is daunting, I shall leave no stone unturned in my efforts to ensure our readiness. With the council's tasks set before them, Kaiden allowed himself a brief moment of reflection. He knew that the road ahead would be fraught with obstacles, both physical and societal, but he also knew that his people were resilient forged in the fires of hardship and deprivation. As if sensing his introspection, the holographic display before them flickered, revealing a series of schematics and diagrams blueprints for the construction of vast arrays and energy matrices, each more complex than the last. The Guardians have provided us with a foundational knowledge to begin our preparations, Leah murmured, her eyes wide with awe as she studied the intricate designs. Kaiden nodded, his gaze fixed on the pulsing displays. Then let us waste no time. The future of our world, our very existence, hinges upon our ability to embrace this knowledge and adapt to the new era that dawns before us. As the council members dispersed, each one focused on their assigned tasks, Kaiden found himself drawn to the observation deck once more. The alien vessel still hung in the sky, a silent sentinel watching over the world it had offered to restore. We have taken the first steps down an uncertain path, he murmured, his eyes tracing the sleek lines of the craft. But if our resolve holds true, if we can weather the storms of change that lie ahead, then perhaps, just perhaps, we can forge a future worth fighting for. In the weeks that followed, a flurry of activity swept through the nation as Kaiden's council set about implementing the preparations for the Guardian's arrival. Facilities were established, curricula developed, and infrastructure updated to accommodate the influx of advanced technology that would soon grace their world. Yet, even as the wheels of progress turned, Kaiden could sense an undercurrent of unease rippling through his people. Whispers and rumors circulated, fueled by fear and uncertainty over the implications of embracing the aid of these enigmatic beings. It was during one of his routine inspections of the newly constructed education centers that Kaiden first encountered the seeds of dissent. As he toured the state-of-the-art facilities, his attention was drawn to a group of protesters gathered outside the main gates their voices raised in a chorus of discontent. Leader Reese, one of the protesters called out, his face twisted with indignation. How can you so willingly surrender our autonomy to these alien invaders? Have you no pride in our ways, our heritage? Kaiden paused, his expression one of calm resolution as he regarded the agitated man. I understand your concerns, my friend. Truly, I do but you must open your eyes to the reality of our situation our world is dying, our resources dwindling. Without the Guardian's aid, we face the very real threat of extinction. The protester shook his head vehemently. And what of our culture, our traditions? Will we simply cast them aside in favor of these outsiders' ways? I, for one, will not stand idly by and watch as our identity is erased, our people subjugated to the whims of these so-called Guardians. A murmur of agreement rippled through the gathered crowd, 
and Kaiden could sense the tendrils of doubt and fear taking root within their hearts. It was then that he realized the true magnitude of the challenge before him. Not only did he have to prepare his people for the technological and environmental shifts to come, but he also had to address the very real concerns over the preservation of their cultural identity. Squaring his shoulders, Kaiden stepped forward, his voice carrying the weight of a leader who had weathered countless storms. My friends, I understand your trepidation, your fears. Believe me, I share your concerns over the preservation of our ways, our traditions. But we cannot allow ourselves to be blinded by the familiar, to cling so tightly to the past that we forsake the future. He paused letting his words sink in before continuing. The Guardians have not come to subjugate us, to erase our identity. They have come to offer us a chance at salvation, a way to restore our world and secure a future for our people, a future where our traditions and customs can continue to thrive and evolve. A hush fell over the crowd as Kaiden's gaze swept across their faces, his eyes alight with a newfound conviction. I will not lie to you, the path ahead will be fraught with challenges with obstacles that will test the very limits of our resolve. But it is a path we must walk, for the alternative is certain extinction. And I ask you, my friends, my people, would you rather cling to the past, watching as our world withers and dies? Or would you embrace the opportunity to forge a new legacy, one that honors our roots while reaching towards a brighter tomorrow? For a moment, the crowd was silent, each individual grappling with the weight of Kaiden's words. Then, slowly, one by one, heads began to nod, a glimmer of understanding taking root within their eyes. The protester who had first spoken lowered his gaze, his shoulders slumping ever so slightly. You speak true, Leader Reese. We cannot afford to be shackled by fear or uncertainty, not when the very survival of our people hangs in the balance. Kaiden nodded, a small smile tugging at the corners of his lips. Then let us move forward, united in our resolve and embrace the new era that dawns before us. For it is only through unity, through understanding and adaptation, that we can forge a future worth fighting for. As the crowd dispersed, their voices replaced by a contemplative silence, Kaiden turned his gaze skyward, towards the alien vessel that still kept its silent vigil overhead. In that moment, he knew that the true challenge had only just begun for not only did he have to navigate the complexities of the Guardian's aid, but he also had to shepherd his people through the turbulent waters of change, ensuring that their cultural identity remained intact, even as they adapted to the new world that was taking shape around them. It was a daunting task, one that would test the very limits of his leadership and resolve. But as he looked out over the sprawling complexes and facilities that had been constructed, the seeds of a new era taking root within his nation, Kaiden felt a surge of determination coursing through his veins. For he knew, deep within his heart, that his people were equal to the task they were survivors, forged in the crucible of adversity, and it was that indomitable spirit that would guide them through the trials to come. And as the holographic displays flickered to life once more, revealing yet another intricate schematic from the Guardians, Kaiden squared his shoulders and steeled his resolve. As the months passed, Kaiden's world underwent a transformation unlike anything he could have imagined. The Guardian's influence permeated every aspect of their society, from the gleaming spires of the newly constructed education centers to the vast arrays and energy matrices that had been seamlessly integrated into their aging infrastructure. Yet, even as the technological and environmental changes swept through his nation, Kaiden remained acutely aware of the delicate balance he had to maintain the need to embrace the new while preserving the cultural identity and traditions that had defined his people for generations. It was during one of his routine inspections of the newly established trade and commerce facilities that Kaiden encountered a reminder of this challenge. As he toured the bustling complex, his attention was drawn to a group of artisans huddled together, their expressions a mix of apprehension and defiance. Leader Reese, one of the artisans, spoke up, her voice laced with a guarded wariness. We understand the need for progress, for adaptation in the face of these. Guardians, but we cannot help but fear for the future of our craft, our traditions. Kaiden nodded, his expression one of understanding. Speak your mind, my friend. I am here to listen and to ensure that your concerns are addressed. The artisan gestured around them, her eyes taking in the gleaming structures and advanced machinery that surrounded them. Look at what they have brought these technologies, these ways of doing things that are so utterly foreign to our ways. 
How can we, mere artisans, hope to compete with the efficiency and precision of their methods? A murmur of agreement rippled through the gathered group, and Kaiden could sense the weight of their apprehension, their fear of being rendered obsolete in the face of the Guardian's advancements. For a moment, he allowed the silence to linger, his mind racing to find the words that would not only assuage their concerns, but also reaffirm the importance of preserving their cultural heritage. My friends, he began, his voice carrying a gentle yet firm resolve. You speak true the changes we have embraced are vast, and the technologies the Guardians have brought with them are indeed beyond anything we could have imagined. But that does not mean that your traditions, your crafts, are destined to be cast aside or forgotten. He paused, letting his words sink in before continuing. In fact, it is precisely because of these advancements that we must hold fast to our cultural identity, to the very things that make us unique and define who we are as a people. Stepping closer to the artisans, Kaiden allowed a small smile to tug at the corners of his lips. Tell me, what is the true essence of your craft? Is it not the passion, the dedication, and the personal touch that you imbue into each and every creation? The Guardians may possess the ability to replicate objects with utmost precision, but they cannot replicate the soul, the spirit that you infuse into your work. A glimmer of understanding began to dawn in the artisan's eyes, and Kaiden pressed on, his words carrying the weight of conviction. In this new era, your crafts will not become obsolete rather, they will become even more precious, more highly valued. For in a world where precision and efficiency are the norm, the unique, the handcrafted, will hold a special place of reverence and appreciation. As he spoke, Kaiden could see the tension beginning to dissipate from the artisan's shoulders, their expressions shifting from apprehension to cautious optimism. So take heart, my friends, he continued. Embrace the changes that come, learn from the Guardian's knowledge, and adapt your techniques where necessary. But never, ever forsake the traditions and cultural identity that make your crafts truly special. For it is in the preservation of these things that we will find the strength to not only survive, but to thrive in the new world that is taking shape around us. A hushed murmur rippled through the gathered artisans, and Kaiden could sense the weight of his words settling over them like a mantle of purpose. One by one, they nodded, their expressions shifting from uncertainty to resolve. You speak true, Leader Reese, the artisan who had first spoken said, her voice carrying a newfound sense of determination. We shall not shrink from the challenges that lie ahead, but rather embrace them as an opportunity to elevate our crafts, to imbue them with even greater meaning and significance in this changing world. As the artisans dispersed, their spirits buoyed by Kaiden's words, the leader allowed himself a moment of reflection. He knew that the path ahead would be fraught with challenges, with countless more instances where the preservation of their cultural identity would be tested against the demands of progress and adaptation. But in that moment, as he watched the artisans return to their workstations with a renewed sense of purpose, Kaiden felt a surge of pride and determination coursing through his veins. For he knew that his people were equal to the task they were survivors, forged in the crucible of adversity, and it was that indomitable spirit that would guide them through the trials to come. As the integration of the Guardian's technology and knowledge progressed, Kaiden found himself grappling with a new challenge, the very real implications of the environmental restoration that had been promised. For while the prospect of revitalizing their dying world was a tantalizing one, the leader could not ignore the potential upheaval such a transformation could bring. It was during a routine briefing with his council that the issue came to a head, the weight of their concerns palpable in the air around them. We cannot simply proceed blindly into this endeavor, Minister Varro warned, his brow furrowed with trepidation. The Guardian's plans for terraforming our world are vast, far-reaching. Have we truly considered the ramifications such changes could have on our people, our way of life? Karina nodded in agreement, her expression grave. Entire ecosystems will be reshaped, geography altered on a scale we can scarcely comprehend. Millions of our citizens could find themselves displaced, their homes and communities transformed beyond recognition. A heavy silence fell over the chamber as the council members digested the weight of their words. Kaiden, for his part, remained thoughtful, his mind racing to find a solution that would address their concerns while still allowing them to embrace the Guardian's aid. You speak true, my friends, he said at last, his voice carrying a measured calm. 
The path we have chosen is fraught with risks, with challenges that will test the very limits of our resolve. But we cannot allow fear or uncertainty to paralyze us, not when the alternative is the inevitable demise of our world, our people. He paused, allowing his words to sink in before continuing. However, your concerns are valid, and we would be foolish to ignore them. Which is why I propose we establish a task force dedicated to studying the Guardian's plans and projecting the potential impacts on our society. A murmur of cautious agreement rippled through the chamber, and Kaiden seized upon the momentum. Minister Varro, I task you with leading this effort, he said, his gaze fixed upon the skeptical advisor. Assemble a team of our finest minds engineers, city planners, sociologists, and anyone else whose expertise could aid in this endeavor. Together, you will work closely with the Guardians, studying their proposals and developing contingencies to mitigate any potential disruptions to our way of life. Varro met Kaiden's gaze, his expression one of grim determination. It will be done, leader. You have my word we will leave no stone unturned in our efforts to ensure the safety and well-being of our people throughout this transition. Satisfied, Kaiden turned his attention to Karina. Coordinator Velas, your task is no less daunting. You must work in tandem with Minister Varro's team, ensuring that our education and training programs are updated to reflect the changes that lie ahead. Our citizens must be prepared, both mentally and practically, for the new world that will emerge from this endeavor. Karina inclined her head, her eyes alight with resolve. Consider it done, leader. We will spare no effort in equipping our people with the knowledge and skills they will need to thrive in the reshaped landscapes and ecosystems that await us. As the council dispersed, each member focused on their assigned tasks. Kaiden allowed himself a moment of reflection. He knew that the path ahead would be arduous, fraught with challenges and obstacles that would test the very limits of their resolve. But he also knew that his people were equal to the task they were survivors, forged in the crucible of adversity and it was that indomitable spirit that would guide them through the trials to come. With a steadying breath, he turned his gaze towards the observation deck, his eyes drawn to the immense guardian vessel that still hovered overhead, a silent sentinel watching over their world. He knew that the time for action was drawing near, that soon the guardians would begin the process of reshaping their planet, of restoring the lost glory of ages past. And as he studied the sleek lines of the alien craft, Kaiden felt a surge of determination coursing through his veins. For while the path ahead was shrouded in uncertainty, one thing was clear he would not allow his people to falter or be consumed by fear. They would embrace the changes that were to come, adapting and evolving as they had done countless times before, until they emerged from the crucible of transformation as masters of their own destiny. With a renewed sense of purpose, Kaiden turned and strode back towards the heart of the command center. The challenges that lay ahead were daunting, but he knew that his people were equal to the task for they were survivors, forged in the fires of adversity, and it was that indomitable spirit that would guide them through the trials to come. As the holographic displays flickered to life once more, revealing the latest projections and simulations from the Guardians, Kaiden squared his shoulders and prepared to face the future head-on. The time for action was at hand and he was determined to ensure that his people not only survived but thrived in the new world that was taking shape around them. To be continued, 